Okay. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Jon Hermann. I'm software engineer um, at Interactive Instruments. And I'm here today on behalf of the ETF Steering Group. Um, these are the colleagues from JRC and Interactive Instruments. And um, I'd like to present um, some projects that we realized in the past with the ETF testing framework, features that we added recently, and our future plans. So if you imagine a simple process where data is collected, data is processed and distributed, what could possibly go wrong? Well, there are a lot of places where bad things can happen. For instance, you received incorrect data, you created an incorrect mapping or configuration, you have software defects, or you have other infrastructure-related issues. And the ETF test framework is a tool which may help you finding these issues. So it's an open source testing framework, which has been developed since 2010. The current version is 2.1, which uh, has been released one week ago. And um, you can use the test framework through an uh, HTML view, or you can use the REST API. Then uh, you can start a test run. The test framework loads the executable test suites and executes tests against a service or a data set. And it's capable of testing multiple resources like data sets, metadata, view service, download, and catalog services. It's an open source test framework, and it's governed by a steering group, which currently consists of representatives from the JRC and Interactive Instruments. And the steering group members can propose new changes to the software through ETF improvement proposals. And uh, the steering group is complemented by a technical committee, which does the technical stuff like merging pull requests, uh, doing releases, and so on. So there is a predefined process for the ETF improvement proposals. This is a publicly available GitHub project board. And in the first column, the EIP is a draft um, that is created by the steering group members. Then the EIP is uh, discussed in the next column. And then the technical committee analyzes um, the EIP, proposes changes, and then the EIP goes um, through the next columns in the release process until it's implemented. So we have some important milestones of ETF. Um, in 2011, it was first used in the European Spatial Data Infrastructure Network project. Um, in 2015, it was used um, in a test suite for testing GML data, city GML data. Um, then there was a big redesign for version 2 for the Inspire, well-known Inspire reference validator. Um, then in 2020, there was the ADV test suite which uh, brought a lot of new changes that were merged into the new version 2.1. And I'll talk about the OSGEO community project application and our future plans um, at the end of the presentation. So the European Spatial Data Infrastructure Network um, was a project to help the EU member states to prepare for the INSPIRE directive. Um, there was a command line tool that uh, the member states could use and execute tests against their web feature and web map services. And at the end, they received a report, a JUnit XML report that they had to style on their own. And um, in another German project, um, which was used by the federal states of Germany, um, they validated their CityGML 3D building model, um, model data. Um, but that were only attributive data tests. There were no geometric uh, tests. And we added for that project a web user interface, and at the end, you received a PDF test report. So important to note here is that we had two different build configurations, one for the service tests and one for executing um, data tests. So we came up with... Um, 
three main design goals for the new version 2 for the Inspire validator. And uh, we wanted to have user-friendly self-explanatory test reports for the user, no PDF or JUnit XML reports. We wanted to be consistent with the standards, which also means we want to be consistent with the standard that the team engine from OGC uses. It uses an internal model that is structured like there are test suites, test models, and so on. And we wanted to be capable of testing all resources in an SDI. And this also means that we want to do geometric tests and we want to test data sets and services in one instance. So we came up with a new approach, with the approach of test drivers, um, which are adapters in the test framework, which control, monitor, and transform the results um, of um, test engines. And as the test engines, we reused existing building blocks like we, had an, um, we have a base X XML database, which we used to execute X queries and getting um, results, which are styled into a result uh, report. And to do geometric tests, we used, um, we implemented GML GUX, which is a plugin to uh, execute geometric uh, queries in the XML database. And um, we have SOAP UI for testing web services, which is based on the SOAP UI web API testing tool. And we also reuse the team engine. So we execute the um, team engine test remotely through the test driver. Um, all this is included in the current um, version two line and also in the Inspire, Inspire reference validator. The Inspire reference validator uses its own custom UI because it needs to be uh, in line with the sites of the European Commission. So it uses the REST interface um, and it's built on, on top as an own uh, custom UI. It's a central deployment and it runs about 200 tests a day. And there are uh, about 850 tests that are implemented. Please note that the production instance uh, still uses version 2, and there will be, um, there is an update plan for uh, January next year. Um, the ADV test suite was used by the surveying authorities of the German lender to validate their data sets, and um, it executes about 600 tests, including topological tests. And um, the lender um, also have um, some um, own tests that they only execute um, in, um, in the lender. So it's a decentralized deployment in, in, in Germany with a central registry with the tests. And for this project, we really had challenging runtime requirements. So a lot of the new features um, that are merged in version two are performance improvements. Okay, so uh, for version 2.1, I will present some of the new features. Um, if you know the Inspire validator, um, in the old user interface, there were a lot of executable test suites that you had to, to select if you want to uh, test a whole theme like the metadata. So um, we came up with a new approach with the test classes which allows the user to execute a lot of executable test suites uh, in, in one run by just selecting the test class. And this improves the usability and also improves the reusability of executable test suites because they are generic executable test suites um, that are parameterized over values. And for example, you can have one executable test suite um, that is parameterized with, an, um, with a, a schema validation URL. So um, another new concept is the isolated view on defective objects. And this isolated view lets you filter out um, objects that have defects um, and would lead to uh, a lot of errors in the report. So um, the idea is to report this error only once. And um, an example is um, 
that you have a building that has building parts, and you know uh, that the building parts um, geometry is not valid um, because multiple polygons, for instance, are not closed. Um, you do not need to execute uh, geometric tests on that. So um, you report this error only once, but also are capable of doing uh, tests like um, checking the references. So for the reference tests, you um, include both views. And the advantage is that you keep the report clean and you Im also improve the test runtime. Um, beside GML GeoX, there's a new plugin um, for BaseX, which is called TopoX. And it's used um, in the German project to um, validate a lot of cadastral parcels. So um, it has really good runtime characteristics. Um, about 20 gigabyte of data are tested in eight minutes, including GML arcs and line string segments. And it detects intersections and overlapping objects, exclaves, holes, and there are about uh, 13 different uh, error codes that you can use for your tests. Um, for the version 2.1, um, we also added the ETF result checker to um, the ecosystem, and it's a tool for comparing the actual result with an expected result, and it's designed to um, use in, used in, an, um, in a pipeline for regression testing. So you add a JSON control file where you say, I want to test this executable test suite, then you add a file with the expected result, upload the data automatically in the pipeline and receive a result for that. Okay, so we want to be part of the OHC community and um, we um, submitted the application for the OSG community project and um, as part of this project, we also created uh, a page on the osgeo.org website, which is accessible through this link. So, and the application is currently um, under ev uh, evaluation. Um, we also uh, sub submitted a, a pull request, which is all already merged for the OSGO Live uh, distribution, and. ETF version 2 uh, will be included in the OSGO Live version 15. Uh, it contains related documentation and some uh, sample ETS like uh, GML tests, uh, OGC team engine execution, and I think uh, WFS uh, test. Um, our future goals are um, to close the gap between just testing the server interface. We also want to test the surf data. And the idea is that we have one executable test suite for checking the interface and one executable test suite um, for checking the data. And then the executable test suite for the interface passes the data to the, to the other downstream ETS. So it's reusable, for instance, if you don't want to use uh, or test your WFS, uh, but OGC API features, you can reuse the second um, downstream ETS for that to test the data. Um, another future goal is to facilitate um, the test development. And um, before, let's, let's do it one step back. So um, how are executable test suites are implemented? Um, basically, there are subject matter experts um, that specify abstract test suites. That's the abstract description of what should be tested. And then um, they write it to an abstract test suite repository and a test developer reads uh, this description and um, exchanges information with the subject matter expert. And then he implements the executable test suite um, in a programming language like, like Java or XQuery and uploads the implemented executable test suite to the executable test suite repository. So we want to improve the communication between the subject matter expert and the test developer. Um, a subject matter expert without deep programming language 
um, knowledge should implement simple tests and change existing tests. And in this context, we also want to improve modularization of the tests, and we want to provide a ready-to-use IDE um, and assist, uh, assist the test developer and the subject matter expert. So in OGC Testbed 17, um, we came up with a new approach with the new TL um, testing language, which is a domain-specific language, which is tailored to, um, to the requirements that we have for developing tests. We uh, implemented an executable test suite for OGC API processes for the standard, uh, implemented a plugin for Visual Studio Code, a new test driver, and uh, gave our input to the engineering report, which can be ac uh, accessed through this link. So the DSL is based on the ISO 19105, which also the test uh, team engine uses. And this is um, an example of a test suite for OGC IP, uh, API processes. It looks familiar to, uh, similar to, to YAML, but it has its own syntax. And um, at the top, there are some meter, uh, meter data for the, uh, for the test suite. Then there is an execute uh, section where other test modules are referenced, and there is a defined section just for, for using or reusing variables across all uh, downstream uh, on the low, lower levels, um, the items. So the test module looks uh, quite similar to the test suites. And on the uh, next level, there are test cases. And test cases have validation steps. And the validation steps are structured with a um, well-known pattern, the given when-then pattern. So the given part describes the precondition. Then the when part, that's the action that is executed. And in the then part, um, the assertion is executed on, on the action that, uh, from which the result has been received. So here are some examples of the, uh, what can be asserted with the assertions. Um, it's, in this case, it's, these are JSON assertions for the OGC API, API processes. And um, if, you, if you're asking yourself, do I learn uh, do I have to learn a new language? In some parts, you can reuse your knowledge of XQuery or uh, JSON path and use it in the, um, in the assertions. And for the rest, um, for all other things, the IDE will assist you with the context menu. So if you, if you add the JSON, um, JSON path assertion, um, you get tooltips from the from the IDE, um, and a problem support view in Visual Studio Code, um, an outline view to um, have an overview of all your tests, and it runs on gitpod.io. Uh, so you can start the IDE and uh, can start uh, writing tests there. So, okay. Um, we have a new release, which is available on GitHub um, and um, OSG Live 15 uh, will use the version 2. Uh, the Inspire Reference Validator um, update is planned for January. Um, the new NeoTL test language will facilitate writing tests and will replace in long term the SOAP UI test driver. Um, the cross-driver execution will allow the test uh, services um, be tested and um, uh, t services tested, including the served data. And um, this project is um, important for, for JRC, and um, we think that um, it's also a good um, helps really the OSGO community. So if you have ideas or want to get involved in, in the development, please contact us. So here are some resources which can be accessed through this link, um, like contacting the ETF steering group. We have an, a Java ETF client library which can be used by integrators and their installation manuals and so on. Thank you very much and 
Um, I'm happy to answer your questions.